You know, I went to a Twitter group chat and a Discord group chat and asked a very certain question. Does the Egyptian pantheon count as furries? The average conclusion I got from both conversations was a maybe, and I can see why. Whether it be big names like Dislight or Smite or fan art, the artists need to modernize the gods to appeal to a new generation adding more animal-like details. But we can't ignore two facts. One is that not all the gods are furries like Cyrus, Iris, and Hathor. And two, the original text would sometimes say the head of animal and body of human or other animal if you're counting Amit or Tawaret. But here's another question. If your furry OC has skeleton shown, or is all skeleton, would it be still counted as a furry? Well, due to the fact this is the 2022, the internet automatically says yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the god of the moon, the god of time, and the god of the night sky. Who is that furry? He's Khonshu. It's pretty obvious that Khonshu in Egyptian mythology and Marvel comics are surprisingly different. The obvious is that one of them is a freaking skeleton and extremely violent. Kill him. Kill him. What's he saying? Is he telling you to kill me? Break his windpipe! But his purpose to defend the travelers of the night is the same as the original text. But in Marvel Comics, he uses something to defend the travelers of the night, which is the Moon Knight. And of course, throughout the last million years, he had Moon Knights, but his most successful Moon Knight was Mark Spector as he was dying in his temple. What a waste. Hmm. Huh? I feel the pain inside of you. in search of a warrior. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> to be my hands, my eyes, my vengeance. <laughs> to be my final word against the evildoers. To bind your very being to me and eradicate only the worst. Those who deserve it. Do you want death? Or do you want life? I don't know. Your mind. I feel it. Fractured. Broken. Most fascinating. You are a worthy candidate to serve me during this time. In exchange for your life, do you swear to protect the travelers of the night? And bring my vengeance to those who would do them harm. That sneaky old vulture. He was manipulating you from the start. No, he kept us alive. Look, he was, he was taking advantage of you. Or it was just a way for me to keep being what I've always been. A killer. Do you swear to protect the travelers of the night? and bring my vengeance to those who would do them harm. Yeah. Then rise. Rise and live again as my fist of vengeance. As my moon knight. Of course, that's moon knight's origin. Khonshu's origin is that he's the son of the king of the Egyptian gods himself, Ra, or Amun-Ra, the god of the sun. Or that he's adopted from the pantheon of the symbiote gods, you know, like Venom. Hey, to quote the Joker, If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. As for Khonshu's personality, he's very abusive. In fact, the moment he met Mark Spector, he already knows that Mark has dissociative identity disorder, or split personality disorder, and he would just make it easier to just verbally abuse Mark, Stephen, or Jake, saying that if it wasn't for his help, he would be a corpse in the desert. I know. Altering the terms of our agreement. You, 
but nothing more than a corpse when I found you. you now you might be thinking that this make him worse than Zeus. No, Zeus is still the number one worst fucking god in mythology, whether it be in myth or comics. But Kamchu is still up there somewhere. And because of his violent actions and interactions with the mortals, the gods definitely don't like Kanchu. And there are moments where he would fight the gods. True. And you know we despise your garishness, your showy masks and weapons. But manipulate the sky again, and we will imprison you in stone. Spare me your self-righteous threats! I was banished for not abandoning humanity unlike the rest of you. We have not abandoned humanity. They abandoned us. We simply trust our avatars to carry out our purposes without calling undue attention to ourselves. Not like some of us. Avatars are not enough! We need the might of gods! Return from the opulence of the Overvoid before you lose this realm! Oh, but things only escalated further with Kanshu in the latest issue of Moon Knight. Basically, this is what happened in a nutshell. My fist, I have a new mission for you. The devil must be destroyed, and you must steal the powers of heroes with primordial force. Back up a woman. You want me to betray the people that I trust the most, steal what's rightfully theirs, just for your personal gain? Do you want me to leave you in the desert dead weight? Fine. And Moon Knight stole the powers of Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Ghost Rider, even stole Thor's hammer due to the fact Uru, the material that's made from Thor's hammer, is Moonstones. Of course, they killed Mephisto a few hundred times, and Kanchu created temples all over New York, renaming it New Thebes, and creating an age of Kanchu. Seeing Kanchu's plan to eradicate evil with genocide, Moon Knight fought against Kanchu, and Mark is back to a normal man, and Kanchu himself is in prison in Asgard. Neck. Overall, as modern media comes over, Kanchu is a recognized god thanks to Moon Knight, and he's one manipulative god at that. While he isn't crazy as Loki, he thinks that his words and actions are just. The one thing that we do know is this is a character who would definitely beat the shit out of Loki. Will we see Kanchu again? That I am certain of, but I don't know what type of plans does he have up his sleeve. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content.